Yo, what up? What's going on? We uh we had planned to do a little gathering to talk Fallout. Things fell through a little bit, but we had some fun. I know I had some fun at the end of the last show that we did. I'm finally getting a chance to do these, talk about some of these horror trivia cards that I got for Christmas. So I reached out. Like, my brother, what up, dude? You ready to do a little trivia with me, dude? Oh yeah. I actually last uh last show was actually really fun. I think that trivia was gonna be is cool as it was but I right it. i'm ready we'll i had a feeling that you, here, but. yeah i know i know you you're a good fit for it though because even though <laughs> like you don't consider yourself like a hardcore horror guy per se you have watched a fuck ton of horror movies not just with me and on dhs and all that but you've just tend to see most movies in the past like 20 years like we always say so it's like instantly yeah. i'm like stuff's gonna yeah. be pretty good you got a couple of them <laughs> on the last show that i didn't get but, uh, dude, you know what I thought? Like, we never get a chance to talk, like, much just, like, random horror, just, like, casual, just fucking whatever. So I was just going to ask oh, you, yeah. kind of kind of off the rip here, all, where do you feel like, like, what has doing this show and all the, the DHS episodes that you did before, like, where has it made you as a horror? Because it's, it's shaped my fucking life. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hadn't That's started the horror channel before <laughs> that. My viewing is so different now from what what i was watching before basically before i really got into horror like three years ago or whenever it was two and a half three years ago before i dove deep i was basically only watching like marvel movies and comic book movies and big action like popcorn stuff like that recently in the past like 10 years that's what right. i've been into but getting into horror especially the old stuff like it's like i i can't view anything like everything is viewed through a different prism now like i didn't get it when people are like oh movies aren't as good as they used to be it's like i still don't think that's true necessarily but i get the argument way more than i used to get the argument you know what i mean it is half true there's okay. elements of it that are true Absolutely. but what's it been like for you um no i i my viewing lens has definitely changed uh since diving into horror these last couple up, of years i used to kind of just kind of like um what's the word i'm looking for generalize it i guess you know mm -hmm. but now i realize like there's like genres within genres in horror you know and it's kind of got a like some movies like they're very schlocky and they set out to be that way and it's like you, in the past i might have held that against them but now right. i kind of understand like within these genres that's what they're going for so it's like it's homaging other films so i've come to respect and appreciate that a lot more mm -hmm. i just kind of thought like you know, the horror, horror films, bro, it's, it, I mean, everything is almost an art form, but horror is like, you know, it's a true, it's not, not a true art form, but I, I kind of looked at it as like a very, uh, people go there to get some quick, quick thrills, but there's a passion right. that goes into this, you know, it's not, right. I thought it was more commercial and I realized that there's a lot of passion that goes into these, a lot of these projects. Well, so it was, uh, it definitely made me, like you said, I see things through a different prism, like stuff I might have seen in the past, you know, I respect a lot more now where it's like, I might have like, it was so commercial, you know, and now mm -hmm. kind of like the, the, now that I feel like I'm a little bit more uppity with my horror knowledge, I'm like, yeah, that one's a little weak. I enjoyed it in the past, but it's for, right. it's for those normies, you know? Right. So well, and then it's there's. There's ones for me like that I was into when they came out. And I know this is a good example because this is a movie that you stand behind. And I and I kind of do is Texas Chainsaw, the remake. There's a lot of movies that like, I remember weird. saying this when, when we reviewed it. It doesn't hold up for me the way it did. But when it came out, it was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that America needed at the time. It did work and it was yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. But it is like now it it almost maybe feels a little bit generic to me now because there's so many movies that came after it that emulated what it did, where it did just update yeah. the old yeah. slasher formula, and it, it really stuck with a lot of that. We we've said it a bunch of times where it starts with the formula where you got happy campers and then you kill them all. But it, you know some of them are annoying yeah. and some of them are likable, and there's this mixture, and it is kind of. But but I will say to your point right off the rip, you said like before. Same, dude. For me, I used to generalize horror to where it was either two yep. classes of it, slashers 
or scary, like the conjuring or Friday the 13th. Yeah. And there's all this yep. gray where it's like most of the best stuff is. And I, I remember even when we started doing like DHS, we'd done a bunch of episodes and it's like, how many of these are even trying to be scary? And it's, I think, I mean, it, right. scares are subjective. What scares one person isn't going to scare another. But that's what I've found is like, there's so many movies that kind of fit in the horror genre that aren't even really trying to scare you in the way that I would think of like scary movies are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Well said. Like I, you know, I don't, I don't know if I would have checked out something like the witch uh, mm. before. Like I, I think I would seen it in the past just because it was like a 24 and I, you know, I was like, you know, I think, we all kind of had been, you know, before we linked up, had been A24. Obviously, a lot of people kept their eyes right. on it because it's became what it is today. Mm. But I was just, you know, they're on a, like a, a bus back then. So I was like, I'll check this out. It's not necessarily my type of movie. But I feel like I would have been a little bit more uh, harsh on it had I seen it back then. And like, I can appreciate right. what it was doing now. So, right. Well, that's what I mean. It, I, I keep, I've said it a bunch of times and I'm not even, I'm not even sure exactly this experience that I had that I always talk about where it's like, I, I've always loved the movie Halloween 1978. Mm -hmm. And then I went back and I really fell in love or not. I don't fall in love is too strong word. I really started studying the Italian Jalo stuff, which I feel like I bring up almost too much on the show. And just, I don't know if you're, I don't think you're a normie because I saw your collection. You look like you're not a normie. You look like you're a fucking like diehard horror fan. What up, E? Thanks for being here, brother. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Um, uh, thank you for uh, Stu earlier said he liked the background. Thank you. I just made it on AI. Don't tell people. People might uh, people might not, might not like that. What the fuck was I saying? <laughs> oh, this is what I'm gonna say, and this is part of the reason why, like, I want to do these series, like we did with Zombie Fest, and like do like we did with March Madness. Even though that's a trickier one, is to like really focus in for a month or so and study these subgenres <clears throat> and look at the evolution of said subgenre. And like basically the experience that I had that I want to uh, recreate for people is loving Halloween and then going back and studying all those Jalo films and the the movies that led to Halloween and the Alice Sweet Alice's of the world and and movies like that Black Christmas which is one that I wasn't familiar with watching all those and then yeah. watching Halloween and like for some reason like it, I had this experience one time after watching all those movies and watching it that I was like dude this is like, I don't know, just like having everything into perspective made me appreciate it so much more. And honestly, in some ways, how much like better where, it yeah. is than all those, but like how it wouldn't exist without all those movies that came before it. And that's why I always say like the foundation. Comparing yeah. It, yeah. Comparing it to comic books, like how good is Fantastic Four? Number one it's, you know, it's, you know, it's not that good, but to read it is a more powerful experience because of it created Marvel. It pretty much created comics like that we, that, that we know today. So. I think you know that's the thing that I've that I want this channel to be about and that I've like enjoyed on my journey yeah. is like learning about it and putting everything in context. Like I have this OCD part of me that wants to like categorize everything. Like right, this subgenre is there and it started here and it goes there, <laughs> and I want to know all those steps. So that's what I want the show to kind of be about is learning all the bits and pieces in between and all that. What What do you think you has been? Well. If you, I'm, I know I'm putting you on the spot. What has been? Either like a movie to you that like, you did not expect to like that on a revisit here or on DHS or or like something that, or like a subgenre that you didn't know you were into that you found out that you like you are into. Like for me, it would be possession movies. I didn't realize like how fucking possession? cool possession movies are or uh, or just anything that jumped out to you. They're like, damn, I didn't think that was as good as it was. Um, let me ponder the something yeah. that kind of caught my eye. Like, uh, but um, in terms of a movie that I thought I was gonna like, oh, this movie's gonna be trash when I revisit it, bro, because I enjoyed it too much as a kid, but I saw mm -hmm. it and still loved it. Was Jason X? I was like really <laughs> worried. I was like, man, that movie just has all the elements to not, and to, in a lot of ways, it probably doesn't work for people. But it, when I watched it again, it still, it still had. I thought it was cool, so right. I appreciated that. Um. A genre that's caught me, bro. I I would say I don't want to say like, not psych psychological thrillers, but I you know I might be slashers because I I for the longest time 
I was hit or miss with those because it's like, mm-hmm. you know, it's a lot of tropes in there where people do the dumbest shit. And me, right. I was a little too harsh. I'm like, why is everyone doing this dumb shit? You clearly don't go out there by yourself, man. Like, don't go in the elevator <laughs> by yourself. Or, you know, don't stay up there by yourself, dude. God damn it. But uh, slashes, they're, you know, they're just fun. Style, hopefully, for the most part, they should be very mm. stylish, you know, and just so I get, I can just appreciate it for what it is now instead of just holding all these these gripes against it. It's, they're just fun, you know, and I appreciate that. Chill. Chill, what up, homie? To uh, to your point about Jason X, and then a point you made a little bit ago is the way that I would have judged that I have respect for a movie. Like, we're going to talk about Toxic Avenger a bit next week when we have this trauma double feature. We're going to talk about him a little bit. And Jason X and Toxic Avenger, it falls in line with those movies that <clears throat> it's like, yeah, they're silly and they're they're stupid. Like, it's a good you know description of them. They are stupid, but they set out to be silly and stupid. And they successfully right. hold that tone through, us, through the entire thing. And that's what it is. Like, there's certain movies that it's like, yeah, like they were trying to be that. You got to respect what they tried to do. That's something that, like, uh, I feel like Robbie's one that says it a lot. And it's kind of, I think of it that way when we're judging these movies. I think we all do. It's like, what were they trying to do? Ju- grade the movie based on right. what they were attempted to do. <clears throat> and that's a, I don't know, there's kind of an art in, in things point. like that. What's E got to say? He says, Let's all cheat on the trivia and share answers. Spoilers if it's multiple choice. I always choose A, B, A, C, A. I think he fucked that up. A, B, A, C, A, D, A, B, A. Mm, I, I thought he was going A. <laughs> I thought he was going A, B, A, C, A, B, B. Abacab, which is, I believe, the blood code in Mortal Kombat uh, on Sega Genesis. But I don't know what he's got. He's got something special. I don't, I don't know what it is. But uh, all right, <laughs> all right. Let's dive into some of these, man. Let's let's see how we can do. I'm going to, oh shit, I'm looking at the very first one is a card that we already answered. So I've got those in with it. I'm just going to take this deck. All right. I'm just going to take this fucking deck. No, gonna, shuffle. It's a bit, you know what? I'm going to just take a chunk of it so I can shuffle it a little bit better. I'll just give it a casual shuffle. This is a, a casual Sunday horror Lightning. trivia stream. So the, the casual shuffle <laughs> will go along with it. <laughs> Let me just casually. I'm not gonna lie, when uh, with when he was writing the the cheat codes down there, I thought he was uh, going for like an ABBA song at first, like he's gonna write spell <laughs> ABBA. Well, the ABA is what made me think of that. Just listen to the extra beat. <laughs> All right, this first one I know that we've actually we've covered together, or at least the, what they're about to bring up in it. Um, uh, you guys down in the chat, just jump in. I don't know if we're gonna keep any kind of official score. We're just fucking off. But uh, <laughs> if you want a head cannon, it we can. We can we can do that. All right. In 26, oh, I almost showed you guys the answers on the backside. In the 2016 film, better watch yeah. out, better watch out. A babysitter must defend herself in a suburban home during what holiday season? Christmas. Come on, that was a, fucking, <laughs> that was, that was a pretty fucking easy one. Um, uh, it's funny. I guess I don't know how the fuck we're gonna do this. I'm gonna give you a card where I'm where I'll just give you the answer straight up or not answer straight up. Where I'll and okay. then I'll I'll jump in on the next one because I know the answer to that okay. one while I'm reading it. You know what I mean? So I guess I'll just do the next <laughs> one for myself and we'll steal from each other on the ones we can't answer on the opposite cards. We'll we'll get it as we go. Herbert West is a medical student who invents. A reagent that can reanimate deceased bodies in what 1985 film? Reanimator. It is Reanimator, which we just discussed, but you you, you haven't actually seen, right? You only saw From Beyond. No, but you still nail it. <laughs> Christmas and Reanimator. All right, so I guess that's how we're gonna do this. I'll read these for myself first, and then if I don't get it, you jump in, and we'll switch back and forth okay. with that. Uh, say ya. Saya, S A Y A, hunts <laughs> cryopterans with her katana in this 2000 anime film. This is a fucking a wild guess. I'm gonna say it's oh god, what is it? It's like perfect blue or something like that. But again, both, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, you know the answer? I think uh, I do. All right, well, just just hang on to it, because and for those that don't know, if I flip it over to verify the answer, then I'll see the answer for the next question. So just remember that one for a second, and uh, we'll find out the exact answer 
in a moment. Well, I'll let you steal it first before. All right. Tagline. Sleep all day, party all night, never grow old, never die. It's fun to be a vampire. Sleep all day, party all night, never grow old, never die. It's fun to be a vampire. I think. I don't know. I'm just getting the vibe that it's probably the tagline that I've never heard for the Lost Boys because the Lost Boys had that vibe. Do you... I'm going to go with the Lost Boys. Do you, What is your answer for the first one? Mine was perfect blue because I can't remember what the fuck it is. Uh, I think it's Blood the Last Vampire. Okay, okay. I could be wrong. Is that for the, and, um, the previous the answer one, or this answer? The, the first one. Okay. <clears throat> the first one. And uh, this one, I will say, love it. First bite, James, Jim, Jim Perry. I probably not. I, I think it's the Lost Boys, but just damn, you got them both. Or I got the Lost Boys, and you got the first you one. Lost I had no Good idea. Shit. I don't know. I don't know. Anime. There's this one that's like something, something blue that is supposed to be amazing. It's like this horror anime that it's been on Shutter forever, and it's always like five, five out of five skulls on there, and uh, it's always in there. It's, I think central. that's. By Satoshi Khan, he's one of my favorite anime creators. Mm. Uh, he did this one called uh, Tokyo Godfathers, uh, a show called Paranoia Agent. Um, there, I'll, I'll send you some stuff. But he's pretty. He's got a lot, a lot of like psychological horror in his. They, he did this movie called Paprika that I could swear to you, it's just like James Cameron stole the idea from Avatar from Fern Gully. Mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan stole the idea of Interstellar from Paprika. You know, so. <laughs> Paprika, I feel like that was the name of uh, the lead character in Joe Corello's <laughs> fucking comic book. What was that? It was. <laughs> Paprika was the name. Of it. I was trying to look up real quick if I could find that movie that I was talking about. I've got, I've got it right here. I always go to Shudder and I like to look at their collections. They're essential shit and sometimes they'll be like oh motherfucker yeah whatever whatever can't find it all right <laughs> moving moving on <laughs> this one's for you this one's for you. you guys out there in the chat jump in if you can all right the documentary king cohen is about this maverick filmmaker best known for his films such as it's alive and the stuff i do not know these i will say all i know is that the they're 80s movies. I don't know who this director is. <laughs> I definitely out of my wheelhouse. Yeah, me too. The uh he's a pretty, I mean, they're not very this King Cohen. Oh, so his last name is Cohen. I know because <clears throat> I've seen it because I just watched the stuff recently, but I don't know who the fuck what his name is. Anyway, the moss haired girl in quotes, the moss haired girl folktale is the basis of this 2020 dark comedy starring music artists such as Vanessa Williams, Usher, and Kelly Rowland. The moss haired oh. girl. I've Rob, or he's got the last one. Mad respect saying Rob Cohen. Well done. I, ass I assume it. Oh, we got, actually we got Larry. Or we got Lefty saying Larry Cohen. So we'll find out in just a second which one of them, if either, is correct. All right, yeah, do you got any uh, guess on this movie? Not, if it's got Kelly Rowland and Usher in it, bro, I've probably not watched it. Um, <laughs> not it. I just, I, but it seems like that's a movie they try to squeeze. I've not heard of it, to be honest. Um, I just, Usher's not a strong actor. I I'm sure he's not. Uh, bad hair. Bad, bad hair, hair and Larry Cohen. So who had, uh, who, I think who that had was it right? Like, Six <laughs> Deuce had it right. You were very close, though. Mad respect. Mad respect to both of you. Mad respect to both of you. <clears throat> um, uh, I don't know why. It just made me think of when we were talking about earlier about movies that uh, surprise us how good they are. I guess one that surprised me how good it still is is when we covered The Faculty with Usher in it. Hell what made me yeah. think of that? The Faculty is one that's like, God damn. Why don't people talk about that more with like yeah. the big 90s horror movies? Because to me, it's top five. Like, you know, it's it's up there. There's Absolutely. Scream, and it, it's right yeah. in the ballpark with some of the best of the 90s. Just the, Bro, there's like, there's, it's crazy how many, Um, well, not too many, but there are quite a few of that cast went on to have quite great, well, Elijah Wood was already a child star, but right. Jordana Brewster, 
you know she you know what's crazy about that this is so random but every time i see jordana brewster in the faculty uh -huh. i also don't recognize her in like fast and furious like i know it's been like 20 something years right but saying, even in the first couple fast and furious movies she didn't really look like how she did in um oh shit i've got to give me just a second i better <laughs> get my charger yeah, yeah yeah do what you gotta do brother Inja says she, i loved the faculty hell yeah it's uh it's really good it's just one of those it feels so 90s and just with the music, and it's one of those, I think I said this when when we reviewed it originally, <clears throat> a lot of times I'll put something on from that era, and I'll immediately feel like embarrassed, like to see people dressing the way that like we were dressing in high school in 1999 or 2000 or whatever, like I'm instantly like, oh, <laughs> it's cringy to look at the uh, the flannels wrapped around the waist and, and things like that. But all right, so I'll just do. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It's still a good look, but I don't know. I don't think you can pull it off anymore. You, maybe you can, but I don't know if I can. All right, who directed? We're on. This one is okay. This one's for me. And the chat. <laughs> Stu says. Stu says, "What was that drug called in the faculty? I don't know. What was it called that they were snorting? Some crazy white powder." I he did have a name for it. So, um, stuff, like stuff or something. Cause he's like something like stuff guaranteed to jack you up. I just remember the tagline. He would always say, <laughs> uh, can't remember to be honest. No, yeah. we'll, have to Google it. we'll Google it. All right. Who directed, <clears throat> again, I believe this is for me, who directed the 1990 sequel, Gremlins 2, The New Batch? Which I think is a trick question, because <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's the same dude that did the first one, is Joe Joe Dante, I want to say. But again, we'll have to hang on for just a second, because I can't look at it, uh, but, but until after the next one. Directed by Martin Scorsese and starring Leonardo DiCaprio. I think we all know what this one is. <laughs> Although I'm having a hard time thinking of it, a U.S. marshal investigates an escape on a windswept uh, island in what 2010 film? Oh my God! I just watched this. Why am I blanking on I, the name of it? Same here, bro. I swear. Oh my! I just uh, watched it. I know what you're talking I'm, about. Oh, I got it. I got it. Am I tripping? I think it's okay. So to recap, the last one I said the answer was Joe Dante, and this one is Shutter Island. Shutter Island. So Joe da Joe Dante and Shutter Island. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Good I was dude. like, dude, I'll do that a lot with names. Bro, and there'll just be certain days that it's like, nope, I'm not gonna be able to do names today. I might not even know my name today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all yeah, I they're immediately down here. The, <laughs> the bad part is like the I knew it wasn't the departed, but the departed popped it kept just popping in my head. I was like, bro, it's not the departed. Stop saying that, you know. Yeah. Like, stop <laughs> yeah. thinking that. <laughs> Chill out, man. It says Joe Dante did an awesome job. It's hard to find a good horror sequel. I think it's one of those where they just kind of let him do. I'm pretty sure, sure the story is he kind of put his foot down and said, "I'm doing whatever the hell I want with Gremlins too." Like he didn't necessarily want to do it, and they they got him to do it, and Respect he kind of did his own thing. That's another one where it's like it gets so silly. It's part of those. I mean, don't get me wrong, Gremlins is silly, but the second one is ridiculously silly. All right, so this one, this one's sure. for you, my brother. How many blades? How many blades are affixed on Freddy Krueger's glove? Is it four? I want to yeah. say five. It's four. It's four. Okay. <laughs> it took me a second because I wanted to say five too. I'm like, well, it's not. It's not three. He's not Wolverine. It's not. The so the, the, they're all down here. They've all got four. So I had six dudes. I think he's just fucking trolling people now. Stu saying foe. <laughs> All right. The new founding fathers of America conducted a experiment that vents aggression for one night in what, ooh, in what 2018 dystopian horror film? 2018. The, the Purge Election Day? No, this is a, this is a trick fucking question. It's it's the first purge. 
the one that's called the first oh. purge, not the original purge, the one that's the first purge. Yeah, the that threw me purge. off. As soon as I saw 2018, I'm like, that's way too new. So yeah, the first purge. That Election made... day is like 18. It's like what? I think a, a election. I think there was like a purge election day. I think that was like twenty sixteen. Mm-hmm. Because I remember like this. Okay. I actually saw That's that one in the theater. It was. It, I remember it being pretty good. That's a series I need to. I need to cover. I'd like to do the first one soon because they're all pretty decent. Like I think there's one or two like really yep. bad ones, but for the most part they're pretty good. I don't even think like the first one's not even like a, not a masterpiece or anything, but it's good. It's a cool ass concept. Just sound. Yeah, yeah. And the second one's really good. Like, on par with the first one, I think. All right. Octavia Spencer. I really the second one. I don't think I'm going to know this one. Octavia Spencer stars as a lonely middle-aged woman who lets a group of teenagers party in the basement of her home in what 2019 film? I do know it. Ma. <sighs> Ma. Right? Ma. Uh, Tina Gray is the first victim of what... 1984 Springfield slasher. I like the way they asked this question. It's a uh, Freddy Krueger is is the is the answer I believe. Yeah. Uh, Ma and Freddy Krueger. Tina's the one that gets killed yeah, up the wall and shit with the invisible Freddy. It's a fucking great. Killer. I would have. I would not guess that. All right. I know you're gonna get this one. This one's for you. All right. So you guys out there, you you might know this one too. So be. I should be giving you guys more credit. We got mad respect jumping in first with Ma <laughs> on the last one, followed closely by Inja Chill, Lefty, and mad respect got Freddy as well. All right, so this one, get ready for it. You guys might know this one. Right. I know you fucking know this one, uh, Link. This Black Widow actress stars the 2013 science fiction art film Under the Skin about a woman who preys on men in Scotland. What is the actress's name? Scarjo. <laughs> there you go, Scarjo. Dude, it's so weird that, like, exactly. I'm sitting there and be like, "What the fuck is her name?" It's like I just I blank on <laughs> names sometimes, especially like in a trivia situation. All right, Harry Warden was the killer in My Bloody Valentine. Valentine. What was his profession? <sighs> sure, I saw this not too long ago too. <laughs> I, I pass. I give up. It is. I wish I would have looked at it because I, I knew it, but I did look anyway. It's a he's a coal miner. He's a coal. That's another one that oh. I need to fucking cover. Dude, you know what my problem with that is? It's like part of me is like, oh, I don't want to cover my bloody Valentine. It's not Valentine's. And then when it rolls around, I'm like, everyone's covered my bloody Valentine. I'm not covering that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I need to just do it some random ass day in the summer and just get it done with. Yeah. Know? Fourth <laughs> of July shoot. Valentine. <laughs> That's what I should do. That's exactly what I should do. All right. This one this one is for Verno. What is the first movie in Rob Zombie's Firefly film series? House of One Thousand Corpses. All right. I don't know the next one, I don't think. In Amityville 4, the evil escapes. Which household object is possessed with a satanic spirit? What is it? I, I've never seen the movie, but what would be possessed? A telephone. I'm going with a telephone. Do you have any guesses? <laughs> I'll say a dial, a dial bro. I, I don't know. It's, it's a better guess than telephone. Uh, so I was right for House of a Thousand Corpses and a brass lamp stand. So <laughs> I think we should have written closer Amityville. than I was. Yeah, we, we should have written Amityville 4, it seems like. <laughs> all, right, all right, this one's for you. I had to double check if that's what I does, it say a dil, does that say a dildo? It does say a dildo. <laughs> he says, I'm at the point in a test where I really start throwing out rando answers. If you just keep saying John Carpenter, I bet I get at least one right. That's a good point. It's true. Mad respect tried for doll two. All right. That's is a 1973 horror film where the main character is slowly transformed into a what? A s- squirrel, a snake. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I'm uh, here. I'm just gonna cover it up. Okay, yes, snake. You are correct, sir. A mother and her two stepchildren 
are hunted by a group of what species in the 2007 film Prey? Werewolves? I don't know. Oh, shit. Was it? I don't. You going with werewolves? I don't think I've seen I've... Yeah. I'm going to say Mad Respect says Crocs. I don't know. I, I mean, I was going to guess wolves uh, just because I don't fucking know. I don't know. Let's let's find out. A lion. <laughs> the first. Oh, yeah. The first answer was snake, which you obviously got right. And the second was lion. So lions track down some motherfuckers in a movie called Prey. Isn't that what the new predator was called? Just Prey? Not yeah. Trouble? Right. And what what was that movie with Idris Elba that came out like not too? He was like in Africa with his daughters and they like were getting hunted oh. by like lions and shit. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's called. Like, I've got like, yeah, the only got like three is... empty beer cans on here. I thought for a second I was about to drink out of an old <laughs> fucking beer. I don't know. I, was like, oh! <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good Cheers. point. He says, he says lions are a pride, damn it. Are hunted by a group of what species? It should have said are hunted by a pride of what species? I think I think, I think that would have given it away. I would definitely right. get it. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. This one is for me. What is the job of Kiefer Sutherland's character in the movie Mirrors? I've never seen Mirrors. Is he... I know this one. You know it. Go ahead. Give it. Lay it on me. What's What's his job? Security. He's a security guard security at a guard. at a mall. Oh, you know what? I just heard of this. Recently, I heard it was pretty de- pretty decent from what you remember. Yeah, I yeah I, I enjoy. I think the um who the person who did either it was high tension, or, or uh I think it was the Hills of Eyes remake directed. Oh really? This movie. Huh. Yeah. That's cool. That one uh, one of the better remakes. Someone should do a thing on best horror remakes of all time. Best <laughs> Get together. Go check it out. <laughs> Search it. All right. Uh, how many ghosts were originally contained in the glass house in the 2001 film 13 Ghosts? 13. Hold, hold on. I'm supposed Wasn't to be the it? one to answer it. Um, uh, oh, shit. I think, I think just, I've never seen that movie. I've never seen the original, and, and I've never seen the remake 13 Ghosts. But I think I've heard that there's only 12 ghosts in 13 Ghosts. That's what I, I've heard that. Do you, do you know? This is... so, Oh, mad respect says twelve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. says eleven. Yeah, because it's twelve. <laughs> I think like the I final. Um, oh, I won't spoil it. I don't yes, because <laughs> the just... the final ghost was was a good ghost. Oh, okay. Oh, really? See that that's a movie that like you know you got to get in the right mood for these movies, but I I put it on. My fiance is like, oh, I love 13 Ghosts. She's of an age where movies that she's kind of in your wheelhouse when it comes to movies. Like your specialty is that 2000s era. You know what I mean? Anything that came out in that era, she knows. Yeah. yeah. But, and that's an era when I don't know. I was kind of like, oh, fucking, oh, fuck, I was doing in that era. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, I, I threw it on. I watched like five <laughs> minutes of it. I'm like, I'm not in the mood for this shit. But I've heard a lot of people. We got Sue down there saying, dude, we got to do that movie. So yeah, a lot of people love Thirteen Go. So I definitely I need to Absolutely. I need to revisit it. All right, this one's for you, my brother. I you know what's I feel like that would. Oh my! I no, that's... I was gonna say I feel like the Thirteen Ghosts would be it would be like a cool sh- show on Netflix or something like the HBO Max. Uh, or, you know, if they serialized it, I think that would be like a cool concept. Is it like each ghost has its own type of like personality and thing that they do and. You can like make an episode out of each ghost, kind of. Yeah, they they are. You, they never dove into it too much in the movie, but they implied like a lot of these ghosts had very tragic backstories, and you could hmm. flesh that out in a show. Like, kind of start maybe start off the show with like in the characters' shoot or the ghost shoes before what led to their traumatic death, and right. You know, um, cool concept though. I, I agree with Stuart. We should cover it. Right. Well, that's what I mean. TV execs they, they 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 eat that shit up. That whole it's like the lost formula that I kind of think of. Where it's like introduce a character, have have them be there for an episode or two, and then go back and tell their backstory at one point. And that's like if you can do that in a show, 
that's like that's where the money is because then you get extra episodes and shit. But all right, all right. This one, this one's coming at you, Steph. It says what 2010 Norwegian found footage right. fantasy film? Say that four times fast. What 2010 Norwegian found footage fantasy film begins with three student filmmakers investigating reports of illegal poaching? What is it? Troll hunters. I think you're right. I'm gonna cover it up. Uh, Troll hunter. It's. A, I don't know if that's the name of it. It okay, is. Oh sweet. yeah, you're on. It. Yeah, troll hunter. Yeah, yeah, you nailed it. it. Says, oh, I, I know this one. You've got the body. I've got the brains. Name the movie, and I gave you a hint by doing a, a decent impersonation of the guy. It's a tricky one. I don't know. It's a tricky one. Oh, someone's got it. Don't Is look it at the comments. Recent? Or you might. No, it's a 1985 film. Are you looking at the comments? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm honestly thinking. I, gotta, I think it's I, 1985. When I'm looking at the comments, I was just, um, <laughs> You want me to give you a hint? It's from. It's yeah. it's from a famous horror franchise, and it is known as if you were going to describe this particular sequel to someone, it would be many times described as the gay one. <laughs> uh, uh, dr Dream Warriors. Almost, dude. You're so fucking close. That was or, uh, almost. It was. I know it's a nightmare. The, yeah. Freddy 2, Mad Respects got it down here. Freddy 2. No, it was uh directed okay. and written by by a queer director, and the guy that stars in it was queer. And they pretty much just like the way I understand it, there was I don't know, I've heard conflicting things. Some people say that they did it without talking about it, and other people were like say that they talked about, hey, we're gonna make this the gayest movie of all time. And if you watch it, it is like very gay, <laughs> like it, in every way that, that it could be. Uh, <laughs> homoerotic don't get canceled <laughs> i don't know i think it's pretty safe to say freddy the the gay one i think i think everyone's cool with it <clears throat> not of course that there's anything wrong with that in fact appreciate it all right five police officers enter a world of madness in Absolutely. what 2015 turkish surrealist horror film all right this one's for me and i do not know it five police officers enter a world of madness 2015. Turkish? Oh, oh, is it? Is it? This is a total guess because I feel like I've heard of a Turkish film called Baskin. Baskin? I got my fingers covering the other answer. So. Oh, he got it. That's a fucking guess. That's how you can tell, even though I don't necessarily wow. spend all, I don't spend all my time watching horror movies, but I do spend all my time listening to horror podcasts and watching horror content. So if I'm not watching a horror movie, I'm learning about that. Baskin. This <laughs> I don't know anything is, about it. I hear it it's good. good. I hear it's hardcore. Yeah, I hear it's pretty badass. <clears throat> okay. We plan help. I'll tell you I'll just because if you're here, you're probably someone that is like a, a good supporter of the show, and I appreciate you. So I'll just throw out like the announcement now. I plan on doing. I don't know the movies. I don't know what I'm going to do, but during sometime this summer, I also don't know exactly when. But I plan to do like four to six weeks, where I'm going to call it summer abroad, where it's going to be all foreign films for like a month month and a half and there's just so many bangers that don't get talked about enough but that's one that i'm i've been considering doing because i just hear about it a lot like basket supposed oh. to be a uh, intense all right lucifer oh, gave yeah. the key to hell in the sandman comic book series to which member of the endless i don't fucking know i didn't even watch the tv i'm like the only person that didn't watch the tv show what up sal thanks for popping in i seen My one up brother <laughs> Yeah, I did too. I saw one episode and it was cool. I just didn't keep going. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know why. But uh, do you have any idea? We got some comic book fans in the house. Mad respect. He's got an answer. He's saying desire. I'm going to say, oh, he, no, he didn't say stew. He said that sounds desire. <laughs> there it is. I'm going to say he's right. I'm going to say he's right. Let's oh, find that, out. Yeah. He's wrong. <laughs> it's Morpheus. It's dream. <laughs> Is, oh, <laughs> is shit. that the main guy? That's the main dude. Is that like the plot of the fucking thing? <laughs> Did it just describe yes. what's the plot of the movie? We're like, I have no idea. <laughs> God damn it! Well, all right, take away that uh comic book 
cool card right there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this one's for you, brother. Uh, a single father struggles to regain his memory after a tragic car accident or after a tragic car accident and undergoes an agonizing experimental treatment in this 2020 Blumhouse film. Hmm. Um, I don't know. 2020 Blumhouse. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like a horror film with like a traumatic dad in the last couple of years. Yeah, me too. Or, uh, and I'm... I give up on that one. Yeah, I have That's no so idea. I have no idea. Let's see. Black box. Mm -hmm. I have not even heard of that one. Mm -hmm. they used to have I'm thinking of Black Phone. Oh. Yeah, it's, at first I thought I was saying Black Phone. <laughs> he got that. Um, <laughs> she was good. She was good. All right. Uh, Ray, Ray Liotta is fed. Ray, <laughs> Ray Liotta is fed part of his own brain in what film adapted from the 1999 novel by Thomas Harris. Uh, I always like to have a nice Keontae when it, you know, and five yeah. beans. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Hannibal. Oh, is that what it okay? Is, no, is what, that the prequel? It, yeah, yeah, okay. Hannibal, you are Hannibal. Right. I, yeah. I hear. Such I just remember. Uh, you know, I haven't seen that since I. Uh, to be honest, since like around the time it came out, it just always stuck with me. Is like I do remember um, Anthony Hopkins like feeding Ray Liotta part of his own brain and mm. shit, and he was like still alive and that. Yeah, no, it's, it sounds like it. Um, there's this one, like Dread Dragon. That's what I, I feel like. For all of the movies post Silence of the Lambs that involve Hannibal Lecter, there's it's really divisive. Some people say Red Dragon's just a piece of shit movie, and then I think Stu loves it, <laughs> or or, or what, I, whatever. I might actually prefer Red Dragon over Hannibal, bro. And you know, but the, the, I hate to say that because you know Brett Ratner directed Red Dragon, while we got really Scott the Legend directing Hannibal. But mm -hmm. you know, really knocking no. out the park. He doesn't. I, even even some of his best movies, I don't. I get why people don't like them. Like even Blade Runner. Like right. I like Blade Runner, but I said it when we reviewed it before. It's hit or miss for me. Even like time to time when I watch it. Sometimes I watch it and be like, "No, oh, this movie's boring as piss." And then if I'm in the right mood for you, it, I can sink into it and be like, "Yeah, like I get it." Do you like Blade Runner twenty forty seven more, or do you like OG Blade Runner? I only saw. 2049 i think it is i think it is i only saw that one i only saw it once and i fucking loved it i thought it was great so i i don't know i would really love to sit down and watch it again because i don't know blade runner is one of those movies that i think the first time i watched it like i said i didn't like it it took me a minute to really get into it the pace of it it is fucking Absolutely, slow yeah. like it's a it's a slow i remember when I'd seen Blade Runner for the first time my senior year of high school, like I had heard of I so it was like for a film class. Which one? Ah yeah. yeah. Um it's the shit, dude. Manhunter's great. Great, great movie. I should think I love Michael Mann. Yeah, but it's fire as fuck. I had seen uh I remember watching seeing Blade Runner for the first time and be like, that was it. This is what everyone's always like it's yeah, all like he's yeah. talking about what a legendary movie it was, you know. But so it did grow on me over the years. But I remember at seventeen, I was like, "Bro, this was a all right movie. It was cool, right. you know." Right. I don't see what the hype was about. It's I don't it know. It's hard. On. Sometimes it's hard to judge. I feel like I feel like it's like early eighties. I said that right. Like Blade Runner is right there, like 81, 82. I even Escape from New York. When I talked about that on PCP Movie Night, I feel like I was the only one, <laughs> and I was even kind of holding back that had anything negative to say about it. Like that, it's paced, that it's slow, but it's like they didn't before certain movies, like certain, like I don't know, Back to the Future, something. There was, there was maybe it was Terminator, maybe it was Aliens Two, maybe it was Aliens mm -hmm. Two or Aliens. That like all of a sudden action movies like were just bang, 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 more fucking intense, and you didn't do like the slow build up in an action movie. Dry. And so that's where, yep. like, to me, there was there's a yep. disconnect. Not that it's a bad thing, but there's part of like the just the way I was raised. It's like, why isn't this action movie more badass? <laughs> like, you yeah. know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
All right. That's a good point, bro. I never thought of that. I, and I, I think you know, like it is a, like a, probably aliens that where you see the shift in 80s movie, like action movies in particular, right. and where they just kind of dive right into it from the jump instead of like having the build up that, you know, Blade Runner and Escape from New York had and shit like that. Right. I never thought and about the, that. That's a good point. The MCU I mean, we look at it now as like a Marvel y type of comedy. You know, you're constantly punctuating everything. Like Bill Paxton quip. is quipping and he's giving you all that, which is honestly something I've said before. I never, I'm not nearly as big of an Aliens fan, but I think that's part of it, as I am the original Alien. I like that like so much more. But I think that is part of it. Maybe I should give it more respect because it's, it's, it feels to me like more of a generic action movie, blockbuster action movie. But maybe it's because it's the first one Absolutely. to really do that. And what I was used to was mimicking yeah. that after that in, in the later yeah. 80s. But all right, hell yeah, yep. man. Predator predates mad respect says that's a that's a fucking great call out too. Predator doesn't have the it's more of an earnest film than aliens too when it comes to right. what we were just talking about with like having the comedy mixed in with it. But as far as being a badass action movie, that's just yes. <laughs> you know, that knows how to keep the pace going and, and be entertaining and explosive than hell yeah all right where where are we at was it is it, is it me is it you do you remember who did the last one it was, was the last it was it was, it was oh, black box and hannibal oh okay. the answers yeah. all right this maintenance tool is used to stab and hack a raft full of campers in 1981's the burning uh pruning shears i believe is what they're called Jennifer Jason Lee is tied between two trucks and torn in half by hitchhiker Rudger Howard. What 1986 horror thriller? Both movies that we covered very early on in uh, in Blood Splatter Chatter's yes, history. So uh, that one would be The Hitcher. So Hedge Clippers and The Hitcher, which sounds like it would be like a 1980s sitcom. Hedge Clippers and The Hitcher coming up right after the Cosby <laughs> Show. <laughs> what's what's that? <laughs> The burning was the Weinstein one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's amazing how much that movie has stuck with me. That I that you know what I'll add that to the list. That's a movie that you know <laughs> I, I maybe was a little harsh on in my review, but I still find myself thinking about. It. I can remember it, you know. Right, so I right. think that says something. About it. That's a big uh, thing. Like when you're right. talking about these slasher movies, it's so like. I heard somebody saying recently where it was two podcasters and the one, the one host was saying like, basically one guy was saying it, there's so little to like really appreciate in a, in a slasher movie, as far as like the writing and the character development, all that, that if you just give right. me something then it'll really stand out above the pack. And that's what the burning is. Like, yeah. It had good character, had good characters, good acting, good camera movement, but those iconic images, like something that when you think of that movie, that you just you could boom, 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 a bunch of images pop up. Another thing, just a random thought, is something Fable said once that I was just talking to my wife about. About like when judging a movie, is we were talking about Bullet Train. Did you see Bullet Train with Brad Pitt? Came out like last yeah, year. Brad Pitt. Now mm -hmm. the instant I could just see like the yeah, like as soon as I say Bullet Train, and you're like yeah, like it's good. Like it just gives me a good feeling. Is it a great fucking movie? No. But like my instant right. reaction is like, oh yeah, no, that was a bad, that was a good movie. Like I don't know. It seems like a silly thing to say as someone that reviews films, but like just that gut it reaction of an older movie, something you saw, like yeah, that was a good fucking movie. But it's nothing to write home about, yeah. or like write some deep I, essay on. No, yeah, it's just fun. You know, it's got cool, interesting characters, funny banner, stylish action. I'm a big right. fan of like those type of setups, like. To me, uh, you know, I've said it before, but uh, Bullet Train reminds me of like a newer Smoke and Aces, and Smoke and Aces is uh, aped off something else, you know. Right, right, right. But I like that the style, you know. It's just, you know, there's enough there. It's not too, like you said, it's not deep, but there's enough to care about. Let me see the outcome of right. this story, you know. It's entertaining. So yeah, I, I like those. They're genres. putting yes. entertainment first, yes. and that's what you know. They're not worried about anything else other than entertaining you. It's that kind of movie. All right, this one is right. for you. This is pretty. My first victim was Judith Myers. Who am I? Shit. You got Ooh. it. Take your time. Is this uh Judith Myers? 
Halloween. Who 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 am I? That's the question. Michael Myers. My yeah, Michael Myers. <laughs> I was like, oh come on, get this. <laughs> uh, Janelle <laughs> Monet. <laughs> Janelle Monet stars in what 2020 horror thriller where her character must escape a southern slave plantation? Why do you keep getting these random 2020? Fuck uh, uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> I know it's it's something it's a Harriet Tubman movie, bro. But yeah, they're giving me the rando like the <laughs> the movies nobody's seen in the last four years, yeah. bro. <laughs> it's, a weird um, one. it's 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 something with Harriet Tubman. I know that. Uh, no. Or am I thinking of a different movie? I or is like know. I know there's a Harriet Tubman movie that came out. I'm gonna go with a Harriet. Man, Tubman. respect says can't remember. Six Deuce says Annabellum. And he's right, Antebellum. I I know the Is name. It? Yeah, Antebellum. What? Oh, Antebellum. Okay, I was thinking of when I saw Antebellum. I was thinking of like Annabelle the doll. Yeah, yeah, you that's know, what I thought. Like at first time. I do guy. remember. He's way off, but no, yeah, Antebellum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, this one's for me. An amateur boxer named Julius. Oh, I already know it. Has his head completely knocked off, landing in a dumpster in what New York theme classic? Uh, that would be Friday Jesus the Christ. 13th. I know. That would, be, <laughs> that would be Friday the 13th, part eight. Jason takes Manhattan. All right. Takashi Miike directed what 2001 gore fest based on Japanese manga? Oh, I don't know, man. Have you ever seen any of his shit? It's so no, um, I did one, or I actually didn't end up making the show for uh, for pop culture philosophers. I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember what any of his goddamn movies are called. So I'm just gonna I'm set a waste in our time. Audition, six deuce says. Is it? Did he do audition? That's when Rappy called. Mad respect says it too. Okay, yeah. okay, I, I, they must be right. I bet they are right. Nah, they're wrong. It was the one that uh, this is the one that we almost that I was gonna do. That I ended up not being able to make the show. Ichi the, the killer. killer. Oh fuck! I, I couldn't oh, think man. of the name of it. That's the only one that I've seen of his movies. Yeah, I've never seen Audition. Did he do Audition for sure? Because that's one. Again, these are like movies that I'm kicking around in my head, wanting to do for that summer abroad thing. There's, there's certain like, you know, big ones you hear about all the time. Which I want to do some of those, but not all I'm of those. I'm gonna look it up real quick. It's yes, they're, they're saying he did it. There's, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your fucking word for it. Mad respect says he did it. So, and that one, I could have sworn that one was 2000. No, auditions 1999. And yes, I, I, I think some people say like it could maybe be the beginning of torture porn. I've never seen the movie, but I'm just saying like they say like a lot of people say hostile and saw, but I've heard somebody say like oh people forget audition when it comes to that argument. But all right, this one is for Missing Link. This, this You'll get this one. I'm a yep. I'm going to try and do the voice. I'm a yuppie banker who dropped a chainsaw on a <laughs> prostitute in 2000 film American Psycho. Who am I? Uh, I can't. Okay, I know you got to dig, dig out his name, Psycho, though. You know who he is, but you got to get his name. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Mm, his do, last but... name, part of his last name, is a nod to Psycho, the movie, the killer in Psycho. <laughs> he says Huey Lewis. Close. Mad respect has it. Patrick. Give up. I'm not a big Patrick Bateman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you're, yeah, you're not the biggest fan of that movie. I fuck, I love that one. Um, after dispatching the mummy, which oh, this is a this is a good one. I can't think of his name. After dispatching the mummy, which character in the monster squad yells, "See you later, band aid breath." I can't think of those characters' names, man. To be honest with you, but I can't remember the fucking kids' names in that shit. No, uh, and I loved that. But I can, can anybody remember their names? I, I thought they were going to answer Huey Lewis. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, I thought they were gonna say Wolfman has, excuse me, Wolfman has nards, but it is, <laughs> it's Rudy. I don't know. I feel bad that I don't know. You know, it's sad that like I watched that movie 
not long ago. I'm like, oh, I hadn't seen that forever. And it was one I thought I was gonna love it. And maybe I need to watch it again. But I watched like half of it. I'm like, it's not, you know what I mean? It's not hitting me the way that I wanted it to hit me for something that I love. I could feel that when I was seven years yeah. old. I'm like, oh, I bet it'll it'll still be there. But it was like, oh <laughs> this is still for kids. I saw All right. the beat. What's that? I saw that one late, actually. Uh, Did you? I think I went in. Yeah, I was like, I don't think I didn't watch it until you, uh, Robbie covered it for PCP Movie Night. Mm. And I think I just didn't go in with any expectations. Right. So I, that way, it's just, you know. But I could see it definitely not. Like the, how I told you, it was uh, trepidatious about Jason X being right bad once I reviewed it. it. I could see how that would apply to a movie like that. Right, especially going from like being a seven-year-old kid. And don't get me wrong, but this is, I, I said this before, that's part of like my issue with films. I get in my head, I get in there and I build it up. Like I, I, I compare right. it all the time when I watch Batman 89. I hadn't seen it in like 20 years. I'd been getting into all these like older films and stuff I was into when I was a kid. I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch Batman 89. It's going to be amazing. And I watched it and I was severely underwhelmed. And then I watched it again like a couple months later and I was blown away. So it's like, I don't know, it's like it's problems with expectations and getting out of my Perception. own fucking head. Like, that's part of my problem, yeah. getting out of my head. What? Okay, this was for me. What is the main setting in the har harrowing thriller P2, which stars Wesley or Wes Bentley and Rachel Nichols? I have no fucking clue. I've heard of this movie, but I have no idea. I'm going to say... Uh, a computer store, like something to do with electronics, parking garage. Oh, I should, I should have. Oh, <laughs> should have yeah. oh, Six Deuce has it. Six Deuce, he's got it. <laughs> I feel like sixty two is on Google, just typing. <laughs> he's he's talking with AI. He's just running my voice straight <laughs> through AI. What material is encased <laughs> around the victims of the killer clowns cocooning them? Cotton candy, cotton candy, son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> this one's for you. Adam Green wrote and directed what 2012 sitcom that guest star D. Snyder, Dave Barocchi, Tony Todd, and other horror icons? I don't know it. I'm it's Robbie was just talking about <sighs> it on my is... show, yeah, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Anybody know it? Like a Twitch 2005 Showtime series, Masters of Horror. I got yeah. that one. Um, fuck. I give up. I in the heart of this is like it's, it's so it's a sitcom. Yeah, yeah. Can confirm six twos is an AI. Up. Lucky enough to have met the dude. Okay, he says. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, Robbie was just talking about this. Holliston. I'm interested. Holliston, yeah. I want to check it out because yeah. it seems like it's it's pretty cool. Adam Green, uh, for those that, that don't know, he's the dude that did the Hatchet movies. He wrote and directed those. And so, Spiral. Yeah, and Spiral, which Robbie did uh, for Not PC bad. People, but I didn't March Madness. This horror genre referring to pulp novels means yellow in Italian. And features films produced in Italy in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Is this me or you? Is it, uh, it's you. Well, okay. What was the question? It is. I, I've actually <laughs> I've said this word once during this show, and I say it. Quite a bit. Robbie says it all the fucking time. This horror genre, referring to pulp novels meaning yellow in Italian, and features films produced in Italy in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Giallo. <laughs> there you go. Hell yeah. <laughs> Italian giallo films. That's funny. Which are basically the murder mysteries. Word on the street is Maxine is going to be kind of the new uh, Ty West film, part of X and Pearl trilogy is going to be based on it's supposed to be a giallo film which is pretty cool like a murder mystery based on the 80s italian giallo which will be fucking awesome which is a nice like a uh, departure for what they've done with the other two movies well done mad respect mad's yeah, killing yeah. it six dudes i didn't realize what a what a horror aficionado you were my brother <laughs> all right oh god i'm looking at the fucking answers all right the italian director 
composed. This is not true, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it anyway. This Italian director composed the score for Dawn of the Dead. Fuck. The, oh my God, this, yeah, like this, this incredibly famous and most famous of all the Italian horror directors is said to have produced the score for Dawn of the Dead. This is bugging me. I know I the name's not coming to me, but um <laughs> I give up. Damn it. I know I'm like, oh yeah, as soon as you name it, I know who you're I know. Uh, let, let me try to just... put his he did Suspiria. Who did Suspiria? Is it popping in your head now? Dario Argento Argento, yeah. Is it? yeah which which I've heard no. he, that's bullshit. I heard he didn't really do the score. His people, like his the people that do the score for his movies, Goblin, who is like this psychedelic prog rock band, they did the score. Right. And like, I don't know, I've heard that he put his name on there, like he did it, and that he didn't do it, but I don't know. I don't know. I that's what I was thinking of. I was gonna say Goblin if I would have thought of the name. I was thinking of because they did the uh that would have been accepted. The, Italian okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says Bruce Springsteen. He said it with confidence too. All right, what 2001 film about the Whitechapel murders is loosely based on the graphic novel by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell? You got that one? Yeah, yeah. I don't. What? What? what this is to you. From From Hell. Oh, I should have fucking known that. Yeah, From Hell. Mad Respect's got it. Mad Respect has got it. All right, what are we at? We're at an hour now. Let's do... I don't fucking know. We'll do like... I'll set aside. <laughs> I'll set aside. Let's do... Let's do... This is our uh, competition now. You want me to put... All right. Kimberly. 10 aside, and we'll see who wins on these next 10. Now that we're nice and warmed yeah. up, we got the juices flowing. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. And if we need to go to the bonus round, we got plenty more. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. He's snapping next. <sighs> I got to loosen up, get limber. <laughs> Bad sex says, me and six do and nine panel tie for the hugest nerds. <laughs> well done, friends. Well done. All right. So that last one, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts with me. I'm going to try to find a way. Oh, no. We're breaking shit. I don't know what that was. Oh, it was beer. We're fine. All right. I, so I did that before the show, everyone. <laughs> I'll do a tally. <laughs> and each one you get right, you get a point. But should we do, like, if you steal one, you get two points? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like just the, so that there's like a chance the, for catch-ups yeah. and stuff like that. So, all right. So this one, as I said, it's for me. All right. This movie stars Gerald Butler and Johnny Lee Miller and is based on the 1897 Bram Stoker novel. Gerald Butler. Gerard Butler. See, I don't even know who the fuck that is. I know I should know that name, and I know you know that name. There's so many movies based on the uh, Bram Stoker yeah. novel. Johnny Lee Miller. Um, Gerald. It's King Lee... Hold on, I think it's King Leonidas and 300. Oh, you know what? Shit, I'm fucking. I, I just looked at saw. I just saw the answer. So I'm just gonna say I didn't get that one. But hold on, don't don't look at the answer because you still might have it. Um, uh, Soul Station is a South Korean animated prequel film to what live action zombie film that explains how the epidemic began? Train to Busan. So do you want to steal? So I have Verno and Link. I have one point, and you have a chance right now to get two points. If you can answer, this movie stars Ger Gerard Butler and Johnny Lee Miller and is based on the Bram Stoker novel. What is it? No. I don't know anything of Gerard Butler's before Who the fuck 2003 is when he did Tomb Raider. It's King Leonidas from 300. Oh, right. This is Sparta. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh -oh. okay. It was uh, Somebody had it down, down here. Nine panel, oh, mad respect what and nine it? panel both had it. Dracula 2000. Wow, <laughs> forgot about that. Bullshit. So, wow, I, did, I can't believe it. And uh, six deuce got trained to be as well. 
Well done. All right. What 2007 home invasion thriller starring Naomi Watts breaks the fourth wall when a remote control is used? Happy people? Oh, wait. I can't. Oh, I don't fucking know it regardless. So, oh, so fucking close. Funny games. I know I've I've seen that. That's got um I've heard got Tim Roth in it. Yeah, that's, yeah I think was, that's a remake of a it's a movie that gets brought up constantly, like especially in the home invasion subgenre. It's supposed to be like I don't know, one of the most like it's, it's home invasion y home invasion movies ever. So all right, here's the next one. Uh I kidnap and murder overweight women and skin them to create a woman's suit. Who am I? What is his name? Buffalo Bill. Yeah. It took me a second. I was like, wait, what the fuck is his name? Buffalo. Ah, is it bug bug crawling on me? Yeah. <laughs> Funny games and Buffalo Bill. All right. Glenn is sucked into his mattress and then spewed up <laughs> onto the ceiling in what 1984 film? A Nightmare on Elm Street. I feel pretty confident with that one. Um, uh, I almost feel bad. I'm gonna give him a take the point anyway. Um, <laughs> Renee Zellweger, <You're> getting all- <laughs> Renee Zellweger, and Matthew McConaughey star in the fourth installment of what classic horror series set in Texas? It gives a, <laughs> it even goes as far as to give you that clue. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre series, yes, a Nightmare on Elm Street and a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. A couple deep cuts there. Come on, Link. Those were tough. Those we're, were we're, let me get ready for my next uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let the record show. Let the record show. So far, you've been getting host. All right. A little boy's nanny leaps from a window and hangs herself in front of his birthday party guest in what 1976 film that I just the covered Omen. on the channel two weeks ago? The Omen. Boom. Three points for Verno, one for Link. Let's move on. What does the killer wear in the 2001 film Valentine? Cupid's mask. Cupid mask. Boom. We're all tied up here at three. Three. Let's take a drink of beer to celebrate that. Cheers. All right. Good. All right. Ooh. Vanna White stars in what 1981 film following the murders? Of a high school track team. What? What? I have no idea. What? Vanna White. I've does, never is, heard. Is the movie, did the movie? I don't know who Vanna White is. I'm like, does the movie? Did the movie come out in the 80s or the 90s? Or do you know? You don't know who Vanna is. Vanna White. Vanna White is the woman that changes the letters around for Pat Sajak on the Wheel of Fortune. She's the one that goes out there and changes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. She. I mean, I was obsessed with her when I was a kid. I don't know. I'm obsessed is a little too far, <laughs> but she might have been my first like boner, pretty much. But I have no idea. Respect. Six deuces. Yeah, saying, no, I've never even heard that. Six deuces saying run fast, lady. Let's let's see if he's right. Oh no, graduation day. If he was even answering that uh, question. Um. Uh, all right, Alan Tudyk and Tyler Labine star in what 2011 film about a pair of hillbillies who get mistaken for murderers by a group of college students? That's going to be Tucker and Dale versus covered- Evil. We just covered that. Yeah. We've covered quite a few of these right here on Blood Splatter Chatter. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. All right, a group of oh, a group of Norwegian students try to survive an attack by what creatures? In the 2009 film Dead Snow, <laughs> zombies, <laughs> zombies. <laughs> there you go. There, there's that's not even a layup, that just happens to be right in your wheelhouse. That's a tricky one for a lot of people that yeah. happen to get right in your wheelhouse. Um, Zach Galligan stars in what 1988 film about a group of college students who get trapped in a wax museum with Count Dracula and Marquise de Sade. I don't know this one. Um, I'm just gonna say I know it's not, but a house of wax. Yeah, I don't know it either, but that's a that's a pretty good fucking guess. Wax work, Nazi zombies, to be specific. 
The first one was not so, okay. movies, but you knew what the fuck it was. You knew what the fuck it was. All right. We are tied up here 4-4, four, four, and we have four cards left. Uh, We got to discredit this one because we just did this when we did this last week. Is it you okay. or is it me? It's a... It's a See, it's you. Ooh, are we, do we do all these? Here, this one, it was that uh, little monsters question that we did when we talked about it oh. last week. <clears throat> so, we'll set that aside. I don't... You know, I'm just gonna... We got four cards left. I'm just gonna give it a quick shuffle and pour, pull four new cards out then. Because we might have been into like a little chunk of what we already did last week. One, two, three, four. I declare some more. All right. Some more. Is this me? Right? Yeah, we're on yeah, me. Yeah, While attempting a seance in a funeral parlor, a group of high school students accidentally release a demon in what 1988 film? A seance in a funeral parlor. Is it Demon Night? Is that a, that's not a funeral parlor, is it? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to say Demon Knight, even though I don't know if I'm right. <clears throat> you got to guess? At a funeral. I, I'm, I'll go with you. No, because I'm thinking of uh, Return of the Living Dead, too, and that's not a demon. I'm just thinking of them partying in the uh, the graveyard. Um, right. I'm going to go uh, with Demon Knight. Oh, oh, and then, duh. Duh! You know what? I'm, I can't get it. I can't get this answer. I should have fucking. I knew what I was trying to say. Demon Knight is the Tales from the Crypt movie. Night of the Demon is the uh, 1988 the De movie. Yeah. Demon Knight is 94. Mad respect says Night of the Demon. Fable says what up? Fable. Fable was right. That's what I was going for. I meant to say Night of the Demon. Son of a bitch. What? But I, I, I you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll give that to you. Well, because I, 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 I knew what you meant when you said Demon Knight. <laughs> right. Hey, girl. Hey, so. hey, you want to play trivia? Say hi, everybody. This is Madison. She's a good baby. Hey, I'm not a baby. I'm a toddler. <laughs> I'm uh no, I'm not gonna give it. We're tied four four. So let's just let's not fucks with it. I didn't I didn't get it right. I could have got it right. All right, Mommy. playing Chop Top in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 was this character's first major role. This actor's first major role. Uh Bill Mosley, who was in the House oh. of a Thousand Corpse. Bill Mosley, uh, he's a uh, he's Otis and Otis and Devil's Rejects and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I do get wow. I'll do get one there. So five, four, three cards left. This one for Missing Link. What 2017 movie? <laughs> here's your layup. What 2017 movie was Jordan Peele's directorial debut? Get out! <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Tagline, The Night He Came Home. Name this movie. The Night He Came Home. Oh, um, the Night He Came Home. I give up. I, no, I don't pass. I'm going to give you a clue. It's the most famous horror movie of all time. Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. I'm uh I won't steal it. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. We're five five. We're five five. How does Michael Keaton okay, this is for me. How does Michael Keaton's character attempt to contact his deceased wife in the 2005 film White Noise? Oh, I know this. You know, don't tell me. <laughs> My wife I knows it. I don't know it. I don't know it. So I'm gonna take a wild fucking guess. That I don't, I don't know. That he like turns on the static on the radio station. And he just tries to listen to her in the static in the white noise, and, and be told, "At eh. isn't that close? I mean, that's I'm close. I mean, I don't know the specifics of it, close. but I just it is close. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Uh, sorry. I mean, I know the white, the static or the white noise was how he like him. Tapping into like the the, the to where he could speak to the dead, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I haven't seen that movie in a long time though. I know Michael Keaton was in it. <laughs> I've never heard of it. I've never I heard of it. it. I feel like it 
it says EVP, electronic voice phenomena. I don't feel good about it. <laughs> I'll just I'll just pass on it, or uh, I won't take it. After being bitten by a rabid bat, I turned on a single mother and her son while trapped in their car. Who am I? After being bit by a rabid bat, I turned on a single mother and her son while trapped in their car. I have no fucking idea. Is it like a dog? An animal? Oh, bro. Go ahead. Take a guess. Because I, I, I was about to pass, but you can have a chance to steal for two points right now if you can figure it out. I know. I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know. Oh, you're on it right there. As soon as you said that, I? I knew what it was. I was like, oh, you're probably, you're fucking definitely right. I haven't seen no, this movie in go forever. For it. You I... didn't answer. No, it's whatever. Because I didn't fucking have it. It's Cujo. So neither ne- neither of us got it. We're still tied here, people. We're you still know, tied. We've, we're down to one card. I, was, I, was, I thought it was too easy, bro. I was like, no, this can't be Cujo. I'm just, yeah, I didn't. Even, I don't know why. I wasn't thinking of an animal. If I would have been thinking of an animal, I don't know why I wasn't. Didn't it say rabies? The fuck is my problem? <laughs> all right, this is for you. This is for all the marbles. We are tied at five five. If you get one of these right, then you are our champion. Let's go. This famous Guardians of the Galaxy director began his film making career in 1985 with Troma Entertainment, for which he wrote the film Tromeo and Juliet. I know you know this. <laughs> James Gunn. <laughs> beep, 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 you. Boom, 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 boom. All right, six to five. That's missing link, but let's let's finish it off. This Jaws actor stars alongside Jacqueline Bissett in the 1977 film. The deep. I should have just ended it after the last one. I feel because I don't think either of us know this. Yeah. Jaws actor. I don't know it. I know I don't. Robert Shaw. I yeah. Uh, I'm right there with you. I would got, not have gotten that. Mad respect says Schneider. He's wrong. <laughs> Six news had uh had James Gunn. So hell yeah, dude. That was fun, man. This is fun. We we'll have to do this more often. I need a. I was gonna say I need more cards, but I really don't. Like we just went through. We just spent an hour. And we went through maybe like a, less than a quarter of the deck. So there's there's a shitload more. Each one of them has two. Oh, so that's pretty cool, dude. I'll, I'll set these aside. Hell yeah. That uh, that we burned through, and I'll save some more. We'll fucking we'll do it again. That was awesome. But uh, hell yeah, man. What, what you got, <laughs> yeah. I was about to ask what you got going on, but I'll tell you what you got going on. I know on Wednesday at nine thirty Eastern time, right? Nine thirty Eastern. That's the the huge on Supreme that's Clientele. Right. We are talking Inferno because I'm actually making my Supreme Clientele debut. Assuming that we can all get through all this by then, or at least enough of it to fake it, (laughs) then then, uh, then we'll be talking about Inferno, which is cool because basically, Stu. I mean, I was talking to Stu about it. He's like, "Whatever you want to do, bro." And I was like, "Well, let's just do something that ties in with the new X Men '97 show." And he's like, "All right, Inferno, it is." And I'm like. Uh, I'm like, there's shorter storylines. <laughs> I'm like, there's a little one with a storm that's going on. There's, there's a lot of little shit. But this is a cool ass read. I don't think he's ever read it, and you've never read it, right? Yep, first time. Yeah. Are you? Did you read much of like the Claremont era, or do you you more like post that? Um, I've read. I there's a good portion I haven't read, but um. I'm aware of through like context of like I you know I don't think I I didn't really read the Outback era which was like kind of right like yeah a little bit before Claremont right. left but I'm you know I'm very familiar with it but I read a good portion of Claremont stuff. Well, it's crazy how still let me knowing you I figure even if you didn't read that shit here I'll bring that in so I can you'll see why in a moment even if you didn't read that shit it's all all that Claremont stuff is still so relevant today that me knowing you, you at least have done your homework. And if you didn't read it, you've learned about that shit. Cause it keeps like everything that happens in Inferno. They're still pulling from that today. Like Zeb Wells just did that Hellions thing. And it's so based on Inferno and just all all those old stories. Like they're still, they'll be farming Chris Claremont's X-Men run forever. Oh yeah. Forever, bro. He, he, that's he's the staple. I mean, when you write something continuous for almost twenty years, I'm sure you're gonna have an impact. Right. Yeah, oh, exactly. yeah, this is. I, 
I just saw this uh, today. I didn't know he was writing the script for Dead People. He helped write the script for the new Deadpool movie. No, so like, Chris Claremont? Zeb Wells. Wait, who? Oh, Zeb Wells. Zeb Wells. Okay. No shit. No, I, did. I, I had no idea. Yeah. He uh, he's, he's young dude, right? He's still like a fairly new guy. I think he's like I think he's been around for a minute, to be honest. I think he's like in his early, well, he's younger compared to a lot of people. Right. I think he's in like his mid 40s, early 40s. Oh, damn. Um, See, I think that's what it is. I'm just getting older now, so that people in their mid 40s are like, look, 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 a kid to me. He's just a, just a young man. <laughs> just getting going, just like me. <laughs> but uh, all right. So, yeah, man. I mean, you got anything else to say on a. Uh... On what you got going on Wednesday, Supreme Clientele. I guess I asked you to set it up, and then I did all the talking. So I apologize for that. No, I, I, don't, I always get tongue tied, but uh, no, yeah, come check us out Wednesday. We're gonna Inferno with Verno, you and I, Supreme Clientele, nine thirty p.m. Doctor Juice Fan Club on YouTube. God damn right, and then. Uh, next Thursday, so coming up just a few days here, he's going to be joining me. I know Stu's going to be with him, with us as well, and we're going to do an, a little trauma double feature, nice little schlock fest. So I'm telling you, just, just for funsies, if you got some spare time this week, go check out Nice Beast. Don't expect a whole lot other than it's silly as shit, and then you're going to laugh at just how bad it is in, in, in so many different <laughs> ways. And then also on Tubi is Class of Newcomb High which came out, I think, in 1986. It's like the film... It's the film that they did after they had they found success with the Toxic Avenger, and they kind of took the tone that worked for them in the Toxic Avenger, and they replicated it in this, like, stoner comedy that is Class of Duke and Hyde, but basically is what... Whoa, you cannot have that. But uh, okay. it's fun. It, it's actually like a real like a real movie, I would say. It's still exactly what we were talking about at the beginning of the show, where there's certain, like, uh, silly ass films that just have a weird tone that carry it all the way through. It's that to the nth degree, where it's just a strange thing that they went with and they pulled off pretty successfully. So I would say check it out and uh, come join us on Thursday night, eight o'clock Central Standard Time. And I think I've got other things up here. Yeah, yeah. Blame Fable last night. Good, clean, fun. Go check that out. And as I said, Supreme Clientele on Wednesdays. But uh, what's that, brother? Oh, no, I was going to say that 62, I was aware of that. Um, Matt Fraction told me that himself before he started working on that when me and Brennan had talked to him two years ago. And I was aware of that also, uh, Matt Respect. I have that brand new day series. And even stuff Zeb Wells wrote before that. Hell Thank yeah. you guys, though. Hell yeah. You you interviewed Matt Fraction with Brandon? Terry Dotson. Hit Matt Fraction and Terry Dotson. I was, like, geeking out, bro. He When he was like, oh, what was that stuff? I was like, oh, my God, Matt Fraction knows him. I'm a real person. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I played... That's a, oh, I'm, I'm sure you did. I doubt Brandon did, but I'm sure you did. hey -oh. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck it. All you guys uh, that have been hanging out with us, I super appreciate it, man. This has been great. We've had a, a good chunk of you here this whole show, so I really appreciate it. We had to do the little... I didn't even mention it at the beginning. Of the... Or, yes, I did mention we had to, well, we'll get to that fallout at one point. I do want to talk fallout with you guys. Yes, so hopefully, that's... maybe in the next week or so, I could have knocked them all out before today's episode. I could have watched the whole eight. I'm on the last episodes. one. So it's, yeah, it's very easy to do. It's a fun ass show. So go check yeah. out Fallout and come find find us online. We'll be here talking about it at some point in the next uh, week or so. So Steph, thank you. You guys in the chat, thank you. We'll see you next time. Later's.